Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Jenna and Tosh Show. I am Jenna Morton. And I'm Tosh Taylor. And we're here, and we're ready to talk about an extremely important topic today. Um, we talk all the time about our kids being in school. We're, we we're avid school parents. <laughs> we, love, we love the school system very, very, very much. But one thing that I know weighs on my kids, minds, and mine when they go to school is the mask wearing in class all day, every day. Yes, yeah, there's, I, I actually used the phrase this morning, COVID fatigue, about mm -hmm. my child who was just like, oh, do I have to still wear the mask? And we totally support the mask wearing, mm -hmm. and we totally get that, you know, it's, it's been a year now, and it's getting hard, but for those of us who have that response to it, a lot of us don't have the added layer of having challenges beyond just not liking the feel of wearing a mask. But that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, absolutely. So we have an amazing dad in with us today. His name is John Gunn, and his son uh, suffers from hearing loss. And he has had uh, some issues, eh, John, with, with school over the past year and, and wearing the mask. I, I wouldn't say issues. Okay. Definitely challenges, challenges. and yeah. things to overcome, but not... Uh, not issues. We haven't, we, fortunately, we haven't had to fight. We haven't run into not wanting to wear a mask. The biggest issue in the mornings is always my favorite mask isn't clean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, yes. I want, I want my, my Superman mask and it's not clean, or I want my Mario mask and it's not clean. But other than that, you know, he's usually excited to get to pick what he wants to wear. But there have definitely been some challenges that have, uh, I, I guess, let us have to overcome them and figure out solutions. Okay. So for folks who might not have someone in their life with this kind of challenge or haven't really thought about it up until now, although over the past year you might have come across it, what are some of those barriers and some of those challenges with mask wearing that would come up for Owen? So the, the biggest, the first thing was the way most masks are made and having to try and buy some and even get disposable ones to wrap around the ears because his hearing aids go around the back of his ears as well. And as soon as something went around the back of his ears, it would pull his ear forward, and then his hearing aid would flop over. Mm. And it wouldn't fall out, but it would still be annoying, uncomfortable, more likely to catch on something, uh, you know, and added to that, that he also wears glasses. So you have something else around the ears. And, uh, and it, it, took, it took my wife a solid month to come up with the solution of finding the right type of elastics, and instead of wrapping around the ears, wrap around the back of the neck and over the head, and then finding out that that's typically the way that a lot of medical professionals wear masks as well, for exactly the same reasons that's more comfortable for long periods of time and doesn't interfere with things like glasses and hearing aids. So it's, that was the, the number one biggest challenge that he didn't want to wear them because it got in the way of his hearing aids and glasses. As Soon as we figured that out, he was so much happier about it. Yeah, no, I can see that for sure. Now, your son, our, our kids go to the same school and they're our youngest, your oldest, my youngest are the same age. Um, he is one of the smartest kids I've ever met in my life. He taught himself to read at what age? I use four and a half, five. Yeah. Yeah. My, my six-year-old still can't read. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what um, do you want to tell us a little bit about his story? Because he was able to read um, because of his, ch of his hearing loss, right? Like it, right. it helped him with that. Well, I, I mean, I think so. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, I guess, it's yeah. It's personality too. <laughs> yeah. and, and, uh, and for him, it all started uh, right from birth. Uh, we're, I, I feel we're really lucky that the hospitals here do a birth hearing test. And at that point, it flagged that there may be an issue. Uh, they didn't worry too much because often it can just be fluids because they're only 24 hours old. And uh, they brought us back. So at about a month old, they went back for more testing. And that's when it kind of slowly progressed. And by the time he was about three and a half months old, we had his full diagnosis that he had, he had hearing loss and ordered uh, pediatric hearing aids for him. And they fitted everything. And the staff at the Moncton Hospital were just absolutely amazing. Uh, so he's had his hearing aids since about three and a half, four months old. Uh, he's been totally used to them since. They're a part of his life. And, uh, and that's really where it began. And because of that, he got a lot of one-on-one of -on -one with some you know, various professionals up through preschool age. And I, possibly because of that, he started showing interest in wanting to understand the letters that they were talking about when they were having him work on sounds. You learn letters, you learn how they sound, and then next thing you know, you know, I don't want to wait for mommy and daddy to come read this book to me. And it, off he went and he was reading. And, and he just has continued since. And, it's, uh, we very much encouraged it, obviously, because 
reading, speaking language is uh, a big part of making sure that his hearing aids are tuned, that they're working, that his ears not full of wax blocking his hearing aids, or that the batteries haven't haven't died. That we we know that he's hearing and interacting, engaging the world around him. Okay. And do you think that a lot of lip reading came into that as well during that time? Yeah, absolutely. And it was very much encouraged, especially early on, uh, working with the the professionals through APSI and the professionals at the hospital, uh, that they're often talking about the sounds that he's reproducing and and saying trying to figure out, are you not reproducing the sound because you're not hearing it? Or, look at my lips, mm -hmm. are, can you make this sound, can you match me, and okay, we're good, and it's you know, the, the normal kid stuff, because all kids have to yep. learn how to use their tongue and their lips and, and everything together, so it's, it's been a part of, of the normal learning process on top of making sure that it's just the normal learning process versus something that needs to be tweaked or adjusted. So did, did Owen rely on lip reading by the time he went to school then? Uh, I, I wouldn't, it, it's tough to say rely, uh, because there's some kids with more profound hearing loss who really, really rely on it. Uh, we were fortunate enough that uh, APSI, the Atlanta Province of Special Education Authority, had us for a, uh, a two day long uh, intensive assessment in Halifax at their, their center there, where they really got a handle on exactly where he was, what his, his best needs were uh, as we were getting set for him to start kindergarten so that the school would know what to, to work with with him. And they determined that being able to, lead, to read lips made about a 10% difference in his ability to understand. So he had a strong ability to understand not being able to see, but it, it really brought up just that extra, uh, especially when there was competing background noise. Uh, I remember sitting there as audiologist there actually turned on an audio recording of a busy classroom. So the sounds of chairs moving and kids talking and the teacher talking and to test just how well he could hear while he was covering his mouth and then uncovering his mouth to see that yes there is a difference. Rely, I wouldn't say, but definitely does make a, a difference. Role. I just have to say how absolutely, absolutely incredible early intervention methods are <laughs> for learning because I know we we had some of the same initial concerns for our boys. We did many, many, many of those hearing <laughs> tests at the Moncton Hospital. Um, and just the wealth of early in intervention programming that is available if your child is diagnosed with something. And th like that ability to have that pretend classroom feel before he went in so that you guys would know. Right. Yes, it's going to matter if he can do this. It's going to, you know, you need to watch out for this. Tell us a little bit about that transition into school. Well, we were, I mean, we were incredibly lucky starting into kindergarten because it was a normal year. It was still <laughs> 2019 and and the the administration at his school are fantastic in their understanding of disability and how to work with disability. Uh, and he was also fortunate enough to have had a kindergarten teacher who has a background in sign language, who understands hearing loss way beyond you know the, the other amazing teachers at the school. And we were really, really fortunate just to get that in. And it helped that he was excited. He was looking forward. He wanted to learn. He wanted to make new friends. He wanted to play. And it, it was a fantastic transition in. And it really did help having that clear idea of it will help to have the uh, digital microphone system so that he can always hear the teacher even if she's turned away. And that we know that maybe the busy classroom means that, hey, we're gonna just need to quiet down for a minute, give a little one-on-one -on -one attention, or whatever other items were needed on top of just his hearing aids working and him being able to see the face of his teacher or the other kids in his class. And, uh, and it, it was a fantastic transition in. He had amazing time, has loved school since day one. I was just gonna ask, what is the, the digital microphone system, just for anybody that didn't know about that? Because our kids were in the same class last year and yes. I didn't know about this that, in their class. The, so. the big funky necklace, isn't it? So, <laughs> and, that's and what I, I think remember of it as. When I was young, I remember uh, that some of the, the students that I went to school with that had uh, hearing aids that the, the teacher would wear a, a big pack around their neck that had a microphone built in. Things are, are a lot more sophisticated today, 
but it's, it does look somewhat similar that the teacher wears a microphone around their neck that connects actually to an amplifi amplification system in the classroom that then wirelessly connects to uh, Owen's hearing aids wow. so that he can hear through that microphone. Plus they had an additional handheld microphone that they would pass around and let the other kids in the class or if he was working at a table with four or five kids together, they would have the microphone in the middle so that he could really hear all around the table. Because even, even though with his hearing aids, his hearing is considered to be roughly the same as any of his peers, there is still issues that because it's, it's somewhat directional, it's, it's not quite the same as the shape of, a, of an ear without something. Uh, so being able to really clearly hear things around can be a challenge sometimes, and especially when there's a lot of noises coming in. You know, our brains do a great job of, of filtering out background noises, and that can be a little tough when things are being amplified into our ears. So the ability to have that in the classroom made a big difference as well. And of course, some of the other kids love being able to be on the other side of the room with the microphone <laughs> and send secret messages across the classroom, or, sure or the teacher. Kid. The teacher yeah. would even go to another classroom to grab something and 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 give him a secret message to pass on. Uh. And, you know, be, being involved and, and making use of it in fun ways. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, talk a little bit about the transition into back to school this year with the pandemic and mask wearing. What were the, the challenges that arose with that? I mean, he was, he was excited to go back. I mean, he, he was sad to have missed the last part of last year because he was having so much fun. And he was excited. Uh, my wife sews masks, so we had lots of fun patterns and, and lots for him to choose from, which really, really helped. He was super excited that he could pick his rainbow mask on his first day back. And he was excited to meet you know, who was in his class. And overall, things have been good, but there have been struggles. It's, it's, he's a social kid. He, he's like his father. <laughs> and and he's, it's a struggle to, to only be within the pod of your classroom versus interacting with different classes on the playground uh, or different classes and different activities. And it limits the, the variety that, that you get to interact with. One of the things that's been a challenge is that uh, kids with hearing loss do have a harder time accessing incidental learning, which is overhearing conversations happening around mm -hmm. you. They're harder to overhear. It's uh, being able to more easily hear, you know, when the teacher's talking to a different kid. It's when you can overhear that, you're learning. And when you're interacting with kids from different classes that have different speech patterns, you're learning. And that's been limited, so that's been tricky. Um, whenever especially we're into a red phase and they're required to wear their masks all the time, you know, he's still hearing what's going on around him. He's still hearing the teacher, but there's that 10% difference where he can't see the teacher's lips and he can't see the other kid's lips. It, it makes a difference. And so we've really had to, to make sure that we're keeping on top of the other, the other items, the being able to separate out and, and kind of one-on-one -on -one or to make sure that things are being put in context. It could be hard to learn a new word without context and without seeing it and being an immersion learning. <laughs> that was my next thing, and learning, learning a new language. Learning yeah. some new sounds, yeah. you know, and, and most of the French language has most of the same sounds as the English language, which is, which is great, but adding those, those rolled R's and trying to learn them while you're wearing a mask. <laughs> Right, and, and it's and it's tricky, and, mm -hmm. and we've been we've had to sit down at home a lot more often to be able to where we don't have to worry about masks. You know, uh, fortunately, my wife and I both are a little rusty, but we both speak French, so we're able to kind of work on that and and talk about what he was having trouble with at school. Uh, and, and again, the the administration at the school has been fantastic to help do some check-ins to make sure that there's no adjustments that could be made within the classroom that he's. You know, in the best spot where he's going to be able to, to see the most for, for his, his hearing and, and speech acquisition and, and everything. Because it, it really, from, from day one, we were told that uh, learning speech is going to be really, really helpful in tuning in his hearing and that learning a second language will be really, really helpful in practicing listening and hearing. And we want to make sure that he wasn't going to miss out on that. Mm -hmm. Does Owen feel a sense that he's missing out on anything, or is it more so that you know what to ask about and look for? Like, does does he 
does he internalize it that way yet? Does he know? Does he I, I, don't, I don't think so when it comes to speech. Um, I, I know that he knows that all the other kids in his class are in the same boat. They're all learning French for the first time. Um, the, I, I know that socially he feels, you know, he knows some of the kids that were in his class last year and that, you know, I'm out on the playground and I, I saw them over in the other zone and I, I got to wave from 30 feet away, but I didn't get to go play with them and, and there's, there's a little bit of that. Uh, but when it comes to the the technical aspects, like he's he comes home excited that he learned new things. You know, more and more he's out of nowhere just starts speaking French to us because he wants to show us what he learned today and, <laughs> and everything. So I, I don't think he feels that he's he's missing out. And I really think a big part of that is it's not just him. It's not just his class. It's not just his school. It's not just New Brunswick. It's mm -hmm. the whole world right now is in the same boat. It's it's. You know, grade one kids across North America are facing exactly the same struggles. Yeah, exactly. And I think that they honestly, I do feel like they're going to carry that for the rest of their school career. They're always going to be a half a year behind, yeah. no matter what. So, yeah, I mean, it is what, what it is. Then, right? Like, exactly. It's, it's, it's yeah. all the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it is what it is. I do wonder about this year's kindergarten kids because learning to read is a big part of mouths moving. and. If you are out there, even on the playground, they're wearing their masks all the time. If someone yells, you don't know who yelled at you, right? <laughs> because yeah. you didn't see their mouth moving. Same thing in, in class, right? You're not teach, watching your teacher's mouth move. So I do wonder if down the road there is going to be speech impediments that, that could have been overcome at a younger age with not having worn a mask. But I have a six-year-old that has a speech impediment without the mask, so <laughs> I, like, I, it's their age too, right? But still. Well, and, and if there are long-term impacts, then it's happening to everyone. Exactly. And so there will yeah. be people who decide that they're going to study it, or people who are going to be like, oh, we need to do this programming for everyone at this age mm -hmm. because of what has happened at various stages. But we're going way off topic, and none <laughs> of are. us are education experts, so. We're not. We're just yeah. hopeful. <laughs> very hopeful. <laughs> very, very, very. What about um, outside of the classroom? Are there any challenges you guys have faced as a hearing loss family in daily life during oh, all this? Absolutely. I, I mean, because of his hearing loss, because he wears hearing aids that have big silicone pieces that go into his ear canal to keep that sound going into his, into his ears, he produces earwax like everybody else, but it doesn't have a chance to get out because those big silicone pieces just shove it back mm -hmm. in. So he has regular appointments with his ENT to check and clean out his ears and make sure that his eardrums are still healthy and that there's no you know, issues with potential infections or anything. And multiple times this year, uh, appointments that were scheduled have had to be bumped because of going into the red phase and that it's considered a, a non-essential, mm -hmm. so it gets bumped. So, you know, right now he was supposed to have had an appointment three weeks ago and it's now not going to be until next week and we know that he's starting, his daily conversational volume is coming up slowly <laughs> a little bit and a little bit because I know there's a bunch of wax in there and he's not quite hearing as loud as he normally would. So just like any of us, if you can't quite hear normally, your voice comes mm -hmm. up. And he's an overexcited six-year-old, so it, it just goes from there. Yeah. So there, there have been some challenges with that, on top of all the, the challenges of not being able to play with other kids, not being able to see family members as often, um, and it's it's been, it's been a challenge. And and we just keep talking to him that it's for the best. It's to make sure that we try to keep everybody healthy. And he's uh, he's a smart kid. He he understands uh, viruses and germ theory better than I think I could have at his age. It's, oh my gosh, it's yeah, nuts. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure these kids will probably all grow up to be scientists because they had this thrown <laughs> at them. And our, when we were six, it was mud thrown at us. But did, will he, like, will his hearing aids change as he, as he ages? Like, will he always need really big ones? Or how does that work? Well, and part of his technology is always changing. Yeah, that's true. Um, generally, right now, for hearing aids that are on the market, they the physical size of them depends on the amount of amplification you need. So his current hearing aids, which he got last December, so he's had them a little over a year, uh, are roughly the same size as the hearing aids he had been given at birth. Uh -huh. uh, however, the difference being that there have been a bunch of advancements over the, the five years in between, 
the new ones are now rechargeable instead of needing to physically replace the batteries. So they just go on the charger every night to charge them up. And the big, big thing is that they now directly connect into his DM system at school, whereas before every day in kindergarten, they had to clip a little extra receiver onto the bottom of his hearing aid every morning and then remove it every day. So, and, and that was you know, a, a third of an inch in size. So yeah, they're, they're smaller because mm -hmm. they're able to integrate that technology. Uh, in adults, I know that there are more products on the market that some of them even fit entirely in the ear canal so that there's nothing on the outside. But again, that comes down to how much you need. And I'm sure by the time he's an adult, there's going to be something crazy that on the market. Nuts. It's it's going <laughs> to wirelessly charge under his pillow while he sleeps or something. It's 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 all changing. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's he has never complained. He's never had an issue with them. Half the time, there's one of them that's hanging out the side because he's running it flopped over. And we're like, hey, tuck your hearing bag. No, no, I'm okay. And he keeps running. And so he's totally he's happy kid. with yeah. it. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, and you being a techie guy too, you must you must like to read up on that stuff too to see what's coming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a absolutely, yeah. and it helps knowing a few people who are in that industry as well. So we've we've had some conversations, and his audiologist that we've worked with since his first diagnosis is absolutely fantastic, and she keeps up on what all the current stuff is. And she was the one that told us, "Hey, this hearing aid is coming out in three months' time. He's about due. I don't want to replace it now. Let's wait three months because this is going to be awesome." And and it's really, really helped. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. That's fantastic. Excellent. We are going to have to wrap up soon, but before we go, since for those who are watching this on the video, not listening on the podcast, sorry, you're going to have to go find the video for this part. Um, <laughs> when you took your mask off when you came in here this morning, I was like, whoa, what are you doing? Can you show us your mask? Because you talked about the way that it, it <laughs> right. goes, yeah, right? Absolutely. Because it, it, you know, yeah. Kim designed it to help so and, with and the it, glasses and the hearing aids, the the pattern is the same as you know most people use that wrap around. But uh, the difference, and even for me, I found I was getting anxiety with it around my ears. Physically, it just drove me crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as that: you just instead of wrapping around, it goes around the neck, and then up over the top of the head. And then over and the then top of the head. That's it. Okay. And it's it's done. And that way, it's not around my ears. It's not going to pull on my ears or feel funny. And it fits really easily over a hat and everything's great. I was gonna and say, then you just, and I can even just put it down. Yeah. That was, it, that was the move when you took not, it down. I was like, not going oh yeah, pocket. it is really different. It's, it's great. I, I just pull it around my neck and I hop in the car and go down to pick him up from school and I just, just pop it, it over my up. head when I go to, to. Well, and I think for a lot of us, you know, it was one thing to wear the typical kind of masks up until we hit winter time, because we didn't really wear them a whole lot last year in the winter because we didn't go out. Mm -hmm. And now this year it's like, oh, we got to do, yeah, the mask and then the hat and the hood and like we've had some, some issues yep. in our house in the morning because of those Same. kind of like, and you know, my, sometimes I wear my glasses, my husband wears his glasses all the time and yeah, like to try to find something that's not, so I can imagine on a kid with glasses and hearing aids, like you said, like just there's so much there already. Right. So this design is just, it's, yeah, it was so cool to see it in person. I remember seeing Kim post pictures of it when she was making them. I and mean, I'm just going to put the plug in. You said yes. she made about 2,000 of these? Oh, something like that. I'm, I'm still making them every now and then. She gets a new fabric that she just has to buy and make some more. She <laughs> bought some Baby Yoda fabric last week. <gasps> baby Yoda, oh boy. What is, uh, I know her Facebook page, but I can't think of it. Off the it's wild. Wildflower Hollow. Okay, you can check that out. And quickly before we go, is there any like Facebook support groups for parents in the greater Moncton area that they that you think has really been beneficial for you too? I I wouldn't say, I mean, support groups. It's okay. it's largely that we, we feel lucky that we have a, a tribe of, of other parents and other families that really get it as well, that are our closest friends. And people like you guys also, I, I know that you guys have faced all sorts of issues <laughs> too. And just knowing that there are other people out there that even if the issues aren't the same, that, that it's, we all get it because we all face something sooner or later. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's about, it's about learning how to be an advocate, whatever the challenge is for your kid, right? Being a parent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Okay, well, John, thank you for your time. It's been awesome learning more about Owen. I love that kid. So it'll, <laughs> hopefully our kids are in the same class next year. <laughs> <laughs> what? I just, I, it's true. <laughs> I have this little vision of you trying to like He's push your children He's together. partial to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. Thank you, John, for coming in and sharing. And we'll see you all again soon.